Okay, this is section 2.3. So we're going to look at graphs that enlighten and then some graphs that deceive because graphs are a way to organize thoughts and they can be used nicely or they can use, be used poorly. Now there are a lot of slides here and a lot of them I'm going to go through very quickly because I think you've seen a lot of the graphs and different types of graphs and you can read about them. Um, a dot plot is one that we will use a lot in this class. It's a nice graph. Notice you're just putting a dot on each of the numbers, except look here, let's look at one of these. I don't know if this is at 101 or 102 because there's only five divisions between each decade. Because of that, Sometimes on a dot plot, you cannot recreate the data. But what it does do, and we'll use it a lot in this class, is I can look at the basic shape of this, the distribution of my data, and it looks almost normal. A normal curve being what you may have heard as a bell curve is very symmetric. This one, if you look at it, you would say it's a little bit skewed to the right. Meaning there's some higher <clears throat> data values, pulse rates of males. Another graph that we'll use a lot is a stem plot. Notice here, you can recreate the original data. For example, here in the 40s, you can see that's a 40 and a 42. So this is the stem. And then these are the leaves. So a stem and leaf plot you may have seen before. Okay, so here's some scores. These are just some exam scores from an old class. So I went through and I quickly did a dot plot. And I can look at the distribution and go, whoa, this is definitely skewed left. And I'm concerned about this value that's down there in the 20s. In fact, it happens to be 28. That may be an outlier. We would still have to check it using standard deviation or z-score, which we'll learn later, but it looks like it's way far away from the rest of the data. If that wasn't there, our data looks pretty normal without that possible outlier. Okay, I also took this data and made an unordered stem plot whereby I just went through each of the data points and put them on my stems. But notice it's not ordered. So I'm gonna quickly make an ordered one just by looking at the unordered one and cleaning it up and trying not to make a mistake. Okay, the 70, zero, I got one, one. Three twos, no threes, I got a four, no, I got two fours, no fives, I got a seven, eight, and a nine and a nine, two, seven, three, four, five, six, Okay, 30, I wanted to make sure I had the same number. Okay, again, the stem plot's nice, 
because if you turn it on its side, it looks like a histogram. And we can say, yep, yeah, skewed left. And we will need the ordered one to find mean, or not mean, I'm sorry, to find the median and quartiles one and quartiles three later on. Okay, some other graphs very quickly. Time series, notice we have time on the horizontal axis, number of law enforcement fatalities there. These are nice because we can look at trends and it looks like the law enforcement deaths are decreasing over time. Big jump here, something happened. Well, look at the time and I'll let you figure out what that was. A bar graph, not a histogram. Histograms use quantitative data. Numbers, bar graphs use categories. So suppose I put eye color here, and frequency here, Well, we use categories, so maybe there's five or six green. Maybe there's two blue. And maybe there's 15 brown. Notice there's gaps in here, so there's gaps. And these are all nominal levels of measurement just to review that Oops. so that's a bar graph you probably made a lot of them in elementary middle school Pareto chart i'll just show you one it's a bar graph but it goes from most down to least Pie charts, gee, I bet you made some of those growing up too. Not a big fan of them because, I don't know, they're relatively hard to read. And by the way, they should write the percent in here so you know. Frequency polygon, just take these from a relative frequency um, table. Notice it's quantitative. This is how Triola does his endpoints for his histograms. We would change those to probably 50 and 100. But it just gives you, again, the shape of it, and you can see it's skewed to the right. You can compare two things this way. It looks like Dunkin' Dope Donuts. They're drive through service times are less than McDonald's. That's the nice thing about a graph. We can do two different data sets, overlay them, and just by visually inspecting, we can learn something. Graphs that deceives, the bad graphs. Here's one that I see all the time in meetings. It bugs me, bugs the math department. They don't like us in meetings. If you look over here, it looks like experiencing nausea with Oxycontin is about 10 times that of a placebo. But if you look over here, it's starting at 10%. It's not starting at zero. If you start at zero, well, then it only looks like it's double. So by starting the graph here, it's cutting off all of this. And it's really giving a skewed idea of what's happening in the study. Pictographs. Something like this. Oops, it's like I was playing earlier. These trick your eye. Because this is 18% and this is 37 and it looks more than 
double because 37 is only about two times the 18 percent but it looks a lot more it looks like at least three or four times as much here's what's going on with these suppose i said number of covid cases in Kern County, if I can spell today. And suppose, I guess I'm gonna do a pictograph, aren't I? And suppose you presented it, let's say March, and then let's say May. And suppose we had this many in March and this many in May. Well, whatever the amount is, it looks like May is double, two times as much. Well, with the pictograph, what the artist will do is this. Let's make this a square. then make this a square. Now suddenly, it doesn't look like twice as much, it looks like four times as much because you can fit four of these in there. So going from linear, which was two times as much, to this non-linear, it's in a plane, so it's, I can't think of the term right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Linear data where it was double, and then we're going to two-dimensional. There we go. It looked four times as much because you're going from straight lines to two-dimensional geometric figures. Okay, that's it for this section.